Uh, just going to wait for the plane as it's going over right now. All right, so how's everybody doing today? I hope you are doing well. Um, it does seem like things in life and the reality is starting to set in, uh, definitely for me. So for today's painting, we are actually going to do a landscape painting. And if you want, um, I did kind of pre-draw my design on there first. After the video, I will upload this as a traceable onto my website so you can download it. Or what I highly recommend, and you can do this with any of my videos that have the drawing on before we get started, um, pause the video and draw what you see. You know, possibly start with your mountainscape up here. It's not a straight line. It kind of curves down and comes up. We got a little half circle here from the corner and then all these other lines. And by drawing what you see, you are actually strengthening your eye-hand coordination. So you may not get it right on the first try, so use a pencil and you can erase. But by drawing what you see, like I said, you're just strengthening your power of observation and an art that's really what we do a lot of. So with that being said, we are going to be starting in the background, our sky and then we'll put in a dark color for our mountain. And then we have two areas that we're gonna be putting grass in, and then we have a little road. And then at the very end, I'm gonna put a tree, a big jacarunda purple tree in there, so. All right, so if you wanna follow along at home, you are more than welcome to. Uh, in the description box below is a list of the colors and other things that you might need. But we are gonna go ahead and get started painting. And it looks like a few more people have jumped on, so thank you for joining my daily uh, live painting demo. And kind of given the time frame of everything that's going on, uh, I'm doing this for my sanity just as much as yours, because uh, it is really stressful out there. So again, for today's colors, we've got white, blue, green, yellow, black, and purple. And then I've got two spots of white on here to do my mixing. So we are going to start with our sky first, and we're going to be making a light blue. So pull a little bit of that white aside. Tiny, tiny amount of blue goes a long way to make your color. There we go. And we are going pretty light, but again, your color might be a little bit different than what I'm doing on screen. All right. And again, as you're applying your paint, try a few different brush strokes. We've got kind of a full wide brush stroke. If you turn that brush sideways, you can create a bit of a skinnier line. And then most of my students' favorite brush stroke is literally slapping X marks on there. And given what everybody's dealing with in the world right now, I would say the X marks slapping everything on there is gonna be your most fun and therapeutic brush stroke. So again, we're gonna be kind of filling in from this line all the way to the top of the canvas. And I am putting a touch of water on my brush uh, but not a whole lot because you never want your brush dripping wet with water. And I will be going over those black lines that I painted on there. I just kind of did them with the black Sharpie marker so it was easier for you guys to see at home. All right. And if you're one of my first time painters, and even for myself right now, take a deep breath. Just relax, it's nice to kind of zone out into the process of painting and just moving the paint on the canvas. And there's something just really nice to kind of see where you start off with a blank white canvas and then after a certain amount of time frame, you've transformed it into something totally different. I tell a lot of my students that they are magicians. They are creating the illusion of space and a different environment on a flat surface. All right. And if you do want to kind of keep your sky or your brush strokes kind of smooth, if you, once you've got most of your paint on there, using light pressure and kind of longer brush strokes, you can keep them a little bit smoother. If you want something with a bit more brush strokes showing up, use more pressure and a little bit more expressive with your brush strokes. You can also apply more paint to get a bit of that kind of cool painterly uh, brush stroke vibe going. All right, so as we kind of have our main background, there is one area that I want a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna take that white paint, slap it right on top of there, and then I'm gonna move my brush very slowly and with light pressure right on top of it. And you'll notice that it kind of mixes with your color in the background with the new color you introduce. Add a little bit more. 
All right, we got a few more people joining. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your support and taking some time out of your day to spend it with me, especially given everything that's going on. Hopefully you do not have the news on the TV right now. We do need our places to where we can be a little more unfocused about current events. All right, so if there's a place in your background, and I usually like it towards the bottom where I want something a little bit lighter, or a little bit darker, sorry. Um, slapped a little bit of the darker blue on there, and then again with that light pressure, just moving my brush back and forth. And you don't have to fully blend this. I do like some of the streaky effect that that uh, creates. All right, and if you are taking progress photos while we go along, this is a good spot to take a progress photo and do everything that you want to the sky before we move on, before you move on to the next step. I'm gonna be moving on to this mountainscape and I am actually gonna switch down to more of the medium flat brush. And for this, I'm actually gonna use the straight blue and then I'm gonna use some purple as my shadow element in there. So again, not mixing the blue unless you want a different color for your mountain and just grabbing that straight blue, putting it on there, whoops. And if you have a little, what we call happy accidents, courtesy of Bob Ross, just wipe it off. And I will cover that with green and yellow paint in the next step. So it's actually a good example as you're painting at home. If you paint something or you have a little drop or a happy accident like that, do not stress out. Take a deep breath. It's just paint. It is not the end of the world. And with acrylic paint, all you have to do is let it dry and then you paint right on top of it and it covers, it generally covers it. You may need a coat, two or three coats sometimes, depending on what brand of paint you're using. But like I said, anything that you don't like with acrylic paint, you let it dry and you can paint on top of it again. And for my beginner and first time painters, um, that's a kind of a nice stress relieving aspect so that you know that you can kind of fix and adjust everything. It does not have to be perfect. And painting in general does not have to be perfect. Painting is so much more about the process of painting and the fact that you are physically going through um, the process of painting and creating something from a blank surface. That is more important, especially to the beginning stages, than having a photorealistic or a perfect painting. All right, so again, I put my direct blue, the straight blue on my mountainscape and where I want the shadows, which is again gonna be kind of towards the bottom, I'm grabbing some purple. It does look similar to the blue. And I'm gonna slap it right on top of there. And again, it does kind of mix with it and creates a bit of a bluish purple, which I find very, very pretty. If you prefer more of a navy blue, you can switch out the purple and use black instead. And if you want kind of a muted, you could actually use brown to mix with your purple and that will turn it to a very muted bluish color. So if you're inclined to try something different than what I'm doing on the screen, by all means, go ahead and do that. When you're painting, I highly recommend that you trust your instincts. Your instincts naturally guide you in the correct direction for you. Maybe not for somebody else, but it's gonna push you in the direction you need to go. So trust that. All right, I am gonna put a bit of a highlight on the top of the shadow, so I'm making kind of a medium blue and doing that same thing, just kind of slapping it on top, maybe a little bit lighter. I am wiping my brush off to get off any excess paint and then going back and with light pressure, blending that into the top of my mountain. Again, if you're holding your breath right now, take a big inhale and you may not realize it until I tell you to breathe. So even when you're painting and you're not watching one of my videos, maybe you'll hear my voice telling you to breathe. Many of my students have told me that often. So anything I can do to help uh, the rest of your life and give you some just kind of calming factors and little escapes from life. All right, so another place to take a progress photo if you're doing that. And again, I'm painting a bit on the fast side because I'm trying to keep this around 30, maybe 40 minutes. Uh, so that way I'm not taking up too much of your time. And I'm also practicing for uh, 
an event that I'm gonna be doing on Friday and I definitely have to keep that at 30 minutes for that painting. And it'll be for the San Diego Humane Society. So I'll put some links on there so you can check it out. All right, so actually before we move into a different color, we're gonna make a really light blue for our road. And then same thing, we're gonna put a darker shadow in there. So I'm going back to the white with just a touch of the blue, almost actually a little lighter than what our sky color was. And if you prefer uh, a, a gray road or a black road, you can switch out this color as well. Excellent, excellent. And just checking comments, making sure we're good. Um, let's see, we got a question. How do you become a student? Uh, basically, you can check out my online school, Paint with Lovejoy, or any of the videos here on uh, the YouTube channel. But on the website, Paint with Lovejoy, I've got all my YouTube videos on there. Plus, I have a few uh, paid courses that you can take. And I have my intro to knife painting. I do have my paint your pet class geared towards first time and beginner painters. Um, and then I can also send you supplies if needed. So there's kits on there. So check out paint with Lovejoy, become a student, get your own supplies, uh, purchase a kit from me and then take one of the courses. And then if you have any questions, just send me an email or join me on one of the live Facebook uh, or uh, live YouTube feeds and I will answer your questions. All right, so on our road, we have our nice kind of light blue on there, but I also, again, want to put a shadow in there. So I'm going back to that medium blue. I'm going to kind of slap it right on the center, wipe my brush off again, and with light pressure, keeping that dark space kind of in that area towards the left of the road, because we are going to have the tree right here. So in a way, this is kind of the shadow of the tree. And again, if you're finding as you're blending, the darker space is going too much, wipe your brush off and go back to your blending. And oh yeah, if you want to finger paint, go right ahead and do that. All right. And again, for me, it's so nice to paint and kind of escape reality a little bit. I think I kind of needed that for today. All right, so get your road to kind of the degree that you want it to be. And then we're gonna switch colors. We're gonna be moving into a mixture of yellow and green on here. And again, I'll be painting right over the nice little happy accident. And you'll see that acrylic paint just makes it kind of disappear. All right. So for my particular paint, uh, my green and white is kind of a spearminty green. And I want a bit more of a spring green. So I'm gonna be mixing green and yellow. So whatever green that you have at home, yours might be a little bit different shade than mine, but you can mix it to your liking. And I generally start with the yellow and add the green until I get to the shade that I like. And don't feel like you have to mix all of it at once. If you have to mix your color a second and third time, that is okay. And if there's a little variety in there, that's okay as well. If you're finding that maybe your brush is shaking, your hands are shaking as you apply paint to the canvas, I've found that if you exhale while you touch the brush to the canvas, you're less likely to shake. And it's again, it's because you're unconsciously holding your breath without realizing it. So laugh at yourself a little bit and continue to paint. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. I am really live. I just forget to look at the comments sometimes. All right. So we're going to use that same shade over on this side. Let me get this bottom corner. And then we will do a little bit of the wet on wet blending uh, for the darker and lighter colors on our little rolling hills here. Appreciate everybody that's joining and following along. I have to say that it is uh, creating the YouTube channel for me was very much stepping out of my comfort zone and it did get easier with more practice. 
Um, but if you actually go and look at my most popular video, uh, that was one of the very first videos I created. And I've definitely got a not, gotten a lot more comfortable with it since then. The next challenge was actually to do these live feeds. And hopefully if you go back and look at the last couple of days, you'll see where I get a little bit more comfortable with each one that I do. So paintings are very, very similar. The more that you paint, the more comfortable you get. And your first couple of paintings um, are gonna be a little uncomfortable, they're gonna be a little weird, and you may actually throw those paintings away. That's okay. Um, don't stop painting and keep finding kind of creative outlets. And don't judge yourself based on what other people are painting. Judge yourself based on what you painted prior to the one that you're currently working on. And hopefully with each painting, um, you're getting a little bit more comfortable and you're learning a little bit more. So painting's never about being perfect or photorealistic. All right, so we are at what we call the underpainting. And this is where there's no canvas space left. And I actually like the painting so much more when it at, is at a space like this and I can't see the white canvas. So another spot to take your progress photos. Um, oh, and then I still got to put the dark shadow in there. So now I'm actually grabbing the direct green by itself. And again, we're going to have our tree here. So I've got a bit of a shadow that's going to happen. And if you are using student grade paint, you may want to apply your paint a little bit thicker. So that way you have a little bit better coverage. So again, I just kind of slapped some of that dark green on there, wiped my brush off, and now going back and kind of blending in a darker space, still using that light pressure. All right. And this is usually the fun part of just moving the paint and blending with it. And you can try those different brush strokes I talked about at the beginning. Uh, you can imagine that each brush strokes like a blade of grass as you're moving it. Because up close you may see some of your brush strokes and your texture, but as you step away from your painting, um, you're not going to see the texture as much. All right, I'm actually going to grab a little bit of yellow. Let's see, let's go for a bit of a highlight back here and on this part. And when you're adding a lighter color into your wet on wet blending, you are going to notice that your lighter color gets eaten up by the darker color much quicker. All right, so again, wiping that brush off, light pressure as we move along this. All right. And again, I forget that I'm alive sometimes, so I'm trying to smile and not make weird faces because that does happen a lot when people paint. Sometimes they stick their tongue out, sometimes they scrunch their nose up. Um, and me as the teacher, I used to call them out a little bit, but now that I realize you guys are watching me, I might be making some of those funny faces. <laughs> Feel free to laugh at me and call me out. All right. Okay, so we are gonna uh, move on to doing the tree and the tree is gonna hang out about right here. We're gonna start with the trunk then we're going to put the branches on there and I'm going to be kind of sparing with my branches because um, again I'm painting this kind of fast we're only at about 18 minutes so not bad I might actually finish in half hour um, but I'm going to apply mine pretty thick tree trunk branches and then we are going to uh, jacarundas are one of my favorite trees around here so we're going to be putting purple um, foliage on our tree so go ahead, you're gonna clean your brush out really good. We are gonna be sticking with that middle flat brush for a bit and black paint. If you prefer to make a brown tree trunk, feel free to switch out. And if you have time at home, I do recommend that you let this dry before you put your tree trunk and your tree on there. But given that this is a live demo, I'm gonna move right in. I was definitely told you don't just sit there on air and let everybody hang out. All right, so again for the tree trunk, um, and it's gonna kind of curve a little bit and the foliage is gonna hang out up in the sky. So this is gonna be a good sized tree. So I like to go probably about where my tree trunk is gonna end. Start there and just kind of pull it down. And I'm gonna apply it a little bit thicker here as it goes over my green paint 
And trees come in many shapes, sizes, directions. They grow towards the light. They deal with environmental issues. So your tree does not have to be perfect. And if it looks kind of odd or a little unique, that's okay. You have a very unique tree. So I'm adding a branch. And let's see, let's add a few more branches. When you get into the smaller branches using light pressure or even moving down to that small pointy brush will be of benefit for you. Remember to breathe. All right, and like I said, I don't want to put too many branches full up there um, just because I'm going to be doing the foliage and I don't really want as much black paint being picked up into the purple. All right, and just filling that off a little bit more. All right, not bad. Kind of a scary looking tree right now. All right, but this is gonna be the fun part. And I did try to make sure that most of the foliage was gonna be in the sky background in case any of it gets picked up and I'm not grabbing the darker color. Oops, sorry about that. All right, so now we're actually gonna go back to that flat brush and we're gonna use kind of a stabbing method. So we're gonna hold the brush perpendicular to the canvas and you're gonna be stabbing it, but I also want you to kind of twirl the brush in your fingers a little bit, so that way you're making a slightly different mark each time that you hit the canvas. Um, and again, this is also a very therapeutic and stress relieving applique paint application. So try not to knock your painting over the easel or knock a hole into your wall or your floor, uh, but yeah, we're gonna be stabbing the canvas with the brush. And I'm gonna start with a light purple first. So I'm pulling some white aside and a tiny amount of purple. And again, your purple may be a little bit different than mine. All right, and I'm gonna do a few up here first so you can see what I'm doing. And now we're gonna hold that brush perpendicular to the canvas. I'm actually gonna hold it so it doesn't fall off. And you might be able to hear that sound against the canvas. I'm gonna add a little more purple so you guys can see it a little better at home. But again, like I said, this is the foliage on your tree. On your really pretty jacarunda. And they do grow very nicely here. And I saw them in Australia a couple years ago. All right. And as I do overlap the black a little bit, some of that black is being picked up. So if that happens on yours, just kind of work it into the design, wipe your brush off, grab more of the purple again, and keep going. We will do this a second time with more of the darker purple, but we won't fill in the space nearly as much. And again, this is a good practice to apply your paint a little bit thicker as well. And I'm gonna move down to the small medium flat brush as I grab more of the purple. And now just going straight for the direct purple. And as you're doing this, um, when you kind of feel like you're kind of satisfied with your tree, I want you to get out of your chair, walk about four or five feet away and look at your tree and your painting from a distance because we are gonna interpret it differently from that distance compared to uh, when we're really close and painting it. All right, and again, I'm kind of looking at mine sideways, checking it in the camera. And I'm actually gonna do this with some white too, give some highlights on my little jacarunda tree. So move the cup so I'm not shaking the camera. And like I said, I will add this traceable to both my online school and the Lovejoy Creations website if you wanna download it. 
You do uh, generally use carbon paper to transfer the traceable, or you can search YouTube on how to um, put graphite on the back of your traceable and then transfer it to the canvas. But I do recommend even more that you just pause the video, draw what you see on the screen, and then move into the painting process. So now I'm just using that white kind of on the tops to give it a bit of a highlight. And you can add as much of this to your jacarunda tree as you like. If you want to maybe have some of your leaves falling on the ground, you can add that. But yeah, you did pretty good today. And oddly enough, yeah, we're at about 25 minutes. I still kept it at 30. I was not shooting for that. I figured we'd go a little bit over. But um, hey, this is how it rolled out. This is what happens. So like I said, I will be doing a live painting every day from 11 o'clock till about 11.30. Maybe after next week, I'll start getting into some more, um, more involved paintings that might take up to an hour. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you want to paint in the future. Um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Really, really appreciate you taking time out of your day to hang out with me and converse and check out the channel. Feel free to share any of my paintings on my channel with your friends, with anybody that's staying at home. And if you're so inclined to support me, support Paint with Lovejoy, feel free to check out my Patreon page. And if you can donate as minimum as $2 or $5 a month, kind of basically what it would be to buy me a coffee, that does help fund the YouTube channel, um, fund the production of the videos, and keep uh, allowing me to make videos for you guys. So it is with your support that I actually continue to grow. So I hope you liked this. If you're catching on the replay, feel free to add more to your scene. Please email me what you guys paint at home and I'll post them on my social media and encourage other people to paint. And just email that, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. So I think we are good to go. I will see everybody tomorrow. And again, leave any comments for what you want me to paint in the future. Have a great day, guys. Cheers.